Maria can pop in. Um, so the first item is the agenda. Did anyone have any changes or additions or questions on the agenda? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and deem the agenda approved then for this evening. Um, comments from the chair? I do not have any comments this evening. Um, and then general business? I do not see any members of the public in attendance, although we did have a question by email, which somehow weirdly went to my work email about um, the city plan, but it looked like you responded to that, Mike. Yeah, I, I sent sent out a reply to that one um, okay. to Peter Kelman on that. So, yeah, and I guess he's mainly just concerned about the tardiness of the city plan. It sounded like, or yeah. lack of information on the website. Um, yeah, and we haven't. Yeah, we we haven't been starting to roll out any um, big advertisements about a big push on this yet because we want to be able to put the website up, you know, the new city web drafts up and have it all vetted and make sure it's all working before we start to market it because we don't want people going and saying, I went and looked, it's not there. It's not working. So we're, we're just trying to, I've got a meeting set up with Evelyn and, um, I get one name and I lose the other. Um, for Thursday that from SE group, Aiden from SE group. So we can go through and uh, kind of get some final things put up there. And then I'll let you guys know, you know, this is where it is. So if you guys want to go and take a peek at it before you can, and okay. then, and then we'll start. Cause we've got, technically it's three weeks from today. Cause we've got an extra Friday in for this month um, or extra Monday in for this month. So we actually have three weeks to the next meeting. But um, I'll be on vacation the week before, so I've kind of got to get everything wrapped up before I go on vacation. Okay. Do you think it's worth just putting some uh, language on the website that says, like, we're working on a new city plan coming soon, or is it going to be, like, so soon that it's not worth it? That was kind of my, ass my, my okay. assessment was it was kind of so soon – you know, if, if I can get it out by the end of this week, that would be great. Um, it certainly has to be out by the end of next week because then I'm going on vacation. So I really need to, it has to be within, hopefully, okay. hopefully by the end of this week, we've got something that's ready. We can publish it, get it on the web, at least let you guys get to take a look at it. It'll be public. So if anyone stumbles across it, they can see it. Um, but then you guys can all take a look at it and maybe we'll do a, start a bigger push next Monday on on the actual rollout. Um, okay. So the, the other piece that came up on the, actually, I guess we've kind of jumped ahead a little bit because um, we had update on the council adoption of zoning amendments. Yeah, yeah. Why don't we do that? And then we'll go back to the city plan. I didn't mean to. Yeah, just yeah, I didn't mean to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because Peter's you... comments kind of got us sidetracked back to the city plan. Yeah. Um, so the the adoption of the zoning amendments, we did go through. Most of you guys probably knew we we did adopt the zoning amendments. Um, so those are all in place. They've gotten through the effective date. Nobody appealed, so that's good. Um, I think these are again not not perfect, but another uh, another big step in the right direction. And we'll see what um, what comes out on those. Um, but it's definitely nice to have those. Uh, those all wrapped up. Um, and Congratulations we also... to, to Mike and everybody involved. I mean, it's a huge amount of work. Um, it was awesome to see the city council push even further than we were thinking we'd be able to get. And it's uh, necessary, but not necessarily sufficient to get more housing. But, you know, it certainly it, may, it goes a long way. So thanks a lot for working through it. I mean, we we talk about the concepts and stuff, but there's a lot of redlining that you guys are doing, right? I mean, you're doing the the knuckle work. So good job for your team, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. And it was four public hearings too, right? So 
Yeah. Was for, for, I guess for continued public hearings or four separate public. Anyway, that was a lot of work. So I did, I did watch that segment where they did approve them. So that was like, I don't, I'm not going to say I watched it go to May city council meetings as you do, Mike. I mean, I think I watched 12 minutes of it to watch when they got, but that was the fourth hearing, right? When they finally voted it through. So yeah, good job. Yeah. I, I echo what Gabe says. No, it was, it's good. Appreciate that. It's, it's, you always hope it's going to go a lot faster and smoother, but rarely does. Every once in a while, one will surprise me, but uh, no, it's good to have that one get through. We then had to go back. Some of you may have heard, may, may not have heard for the river hazard. So we had passed the river hazard pretty, pretty quickly and easily, but then we had to go back and I warned an emergency meeting um, emergency hearing because we had a loophole that was being exploited on, and it makes it kind of sound nefarious. Uh, there was just was a loophole, um, that we didn't know about. And, uh, so if somebody has a non conforming commercial building in the downtown, a lot of them here on main street and Elm street are, um, they don't conform to the river hazard regulations. Um, if you do, you could convert them from commercial to residential. So after the flood, we identified 13 buildings that had residential buildings that had flooding into the first floor. And one of our goals in the office was really to go out and target and get money from the state and the federal government to elevate all 12 of those buildings, or in some cases, tear them down. Um, there are a couple of them that it's up to the property owner. If the property owner would, would rather take the buyout, they could take the buyout. But we really wanted to save as many housing units as we could. So we were. it looks optimistic that we might get that money. And so we're feeling good. We're going to get ourselves in a place where if we flood it again, nobody gets displaced. Because, you know, unless it's a bigger flood than we had. Um, but we would have found everybody who flooded into the first floor, and then we would have them all elevated. And that would be good. Um, meanwhile, what I didn't know was, um, my zoning administrator had been issuing a couple of permits to people to convert commercial space to residential space that's below the flood stage. And she was like, well, there's nothing illegal about it. And it's true. There isn't, but we really, um, the best example I could give is to explain the loophole aspect of it. So city hall is non-conforming. You could put residential units into the basement under the current, well, under the previous rules, we just changed them. But under the previous rules, you could have put residential units into the basement and they could have flooded four feet. But if the city spent $2 million to floodproof the building, then it would become conforming. It's a conforming commercial building and it would then be illegal to put them in the basement because you had made it floodproof so it wouldn't flood. So if it can flood and it's non-conforming, then you can put people to live in there. But if it's floodproof and they can't move into it uh, and it can't flood, then you can't move them into it. So, and that's why I said it's a loophole. It, the, the intention, everything in the rules are written that says, if you build something new, it has to be two feet above the base flood elevation. It, you can't convert conforming commercial to conforming residential unless it's elevated to two feet above base flood elevation. But then there's this hole for the non-conforming. So what we said was people shouldn't be allowed to do that. And it really was a policy question for council. Do you want to allow these to get converted or not? Um, in this case, uh, hippie chickpea, people are familiar with that. That's now residential and the uncommon market is now residential. So the question is, would we allow more of these to happen? Um, and my recommendation was, no, we should not be allowing more, you know, more, more housing. If we're making more housing, it should all be safe housing and it should all be conforming housing. Um, so, uh, council mostly agreed with me six to one. And so that was how it passed. So, um, the, we amended the zoning to say non-conforming cannot be converted to residential. So, uh, that did get passed the same night. So. Fortunately, both of those both of those are done, and I can now get them wrapped up. And there's a bunch of state recording requirements I got to do to get them finished. Finished, but they're mostly done. 
there is going to be residential. I didn't catch this. I went to the city council meeting, but I didn't catch that example of the the uncommon market and that hippie chickpea will have housing on the first floor because it just yep. slipped through already. Okay. Yeah, because it, yeah, it went through, and I I didn't know about it. My zoning administrator was like, "Well, yeah, of course, it meets the regulations. So why wouldn't I approve it?" And I was like, "Well, <laughs> because people shouldn't be." And in those cases, they weren't egregious. Um, they're not really far below the base flood elevation. But we did have a couple other properties that were purchased. We know of at least two other properties that were purchased that they purchased them with the intent of converting them to residential. And that was how I found out about it was because I was talking to to Josh, my community development specialist about, well, you know, so-and-so has got to know he's got to elevate that building before he can convert it to residential. And Meredith was like, no, he doesn't. And this was a building that had like five feet of water in the first floor. I mean, it was a significantly lower building. And I was like, oh, heck no, that is not going to happen. <laughs> not without okay, a Okay, so we were proactive addressing those. We okay. were proactive on addressing Good those. And that was when Meredith was like, well, yeah, I've already approved an application for this property and this property. And I've got this person that I'm talking to. And I'm like, well, that's, this is a problem. We really need to. If council, again, it was a policy question, by putting it to, to council, they could have said, nope, the status quo is fine. There's no NFIP requirement that says, no national flood insurance program requirement that says you can't make those conversions. It's just kind of a policy thing, especially post-flood. And I, I've told a lot of people this. I was like, you know, we may have had a different reaction had FEMA been just done a bang up job and said, gosh, they're great at taking care of people after a flood. But the reality is, you know, they're, you know, nobody, nobody gave FEMA five stars on their, you know, displaced conditions and, and how FEMA reacted and helped getting them back on their feet. So I'm trying to work as hard as I can to try to make sure at least from a residential standpoint, nobody gets displaced. And then once we've got them taken care of, we can start really attacking the downtown commercial because the last thing we need is another $40 million, $50 million, $60 million in losses in the downtown so we can start flood-proofing buildings. But first things first, take care of the people. Then we'll get to take care of the, the commercial businesses next. Great. I'll be right back. Oh, Maria, I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you either. <laughs> no. Is your is the microphone? I turned on her chat function, so now she can chat. So we'll see what. Where's the chat? Here it is. What's going to happen with people who already converted their properties to residential? Uh, so at this point, nothing will happen to those folks that have already converted. So those two properties... Um, they were they were converted. One of them actually they did as much elevating as they could. So they were uh, trying to be as responsible as possible and elevated the floors as much as they could. Um, we're gonna try as much as we can um, to go through. And that was a little bit why I said they they weren't really egregious. I mean they're like really close. It would have to be. You know, it's one of these ones, they're elevated enough that they wouldn't have flooded in 92, but they would flood in 2023. Um, so, you know, it's like they they elevated them as much as they could. They removed the utilities from the basement. They've done all those pieces that are right. They just didn't get the opportunity. They just didn't have the requirement to actually jack up the buildings, elevate the buildings, um, which would be expensive and probably would have been prohibitively expensive and made it so they wouldn't convert them. But we will add them to the list. They'll kind of be at the bottom of the list. So we still have 12 properties. We're still trying to get money to elevate the buildings. If we get money to elevate the buildings, we've got a priority list of 
these people are first because they're substantially damaged. They're in a much worse situation. We're going to do them first. And then we've kind of got this tier of these guys are second, these guys are third, these guys are fourth. So that way, you know, and these guys will be lower on the list um, because they're kind of done afterwards. But if we've got money left and if the state's still willing to help, we might be able to go back and say, we know you got, you put the residential units in here. Would you be interested in having us help pay to elevate the building? Um, no, re can't require them to, but we can ask them. I'm just curious not to delve into this too deeply, but are the mechanicals in those buildings higher or are they? They did elevate the mechanicals. That was okay, a, good. that's a requirement for anybody. You have to elevate the oh, mechanicals. Okay. So, oh, good. Okay. So that it, it's just, you know, the concern I always have is the, the ice jam. You know, you always try to think of what would be the worst case scenario. All right. So we get an ice jam happens at night or in the dark and somebody is living in one of these buildings and icy water flows into the house. You don't know it's happening because it's an ice jam. You just went to bed not knowing anything was going to happen. Suddenly your house fills up with water and, you know, filling up with this much water is one thing. Filling up with that much water is, you know, getting progressively worse. And um, so we just don't want to have any situations where people are in a position. So if we can elevate the building, then you just sit on your little island and you wait for the water to go back down. Um, you can shelter in place. At least that's our that's our strategy. Um, so hopefully, hopefully money comes through and all of this becomes moot. We'll get all those elevated. We'll get to keep the housing units. But it will stop a few projects potentially um, unless they already planned on elevating the buildings. I don't, we didn't, get into the details of those other projects and we'll see where they go. Okay. Um, does anyone have any other questions before we move on to the city plan? The next item. Okay. So Mike, maybe you can start us off by sort of giving us what's the to-do list to get this March 13th, um, first public input meeting off the ground. So I did uh, meet with Maria. It was great to go over and see the, um, get to see the, the place where we're going to be hosting. And okay. so I think that's a good place. It'll work out. Um, so I didn't know the site. It's a, actually across the street from Shaw's. So if you, if you guys don't know where it is, that's the easiest landmark. Uh, it's in that, uh, the old, um, station building there uh in the front so it's a it's a visible space gotta help her get a few more signs <laughs> nice big signs for it um oh, oh have a good. big sign coming awesome so um that's our uh so we'll we'll get advertisement going on it once we've got it online and it's available for everyone to see um the web uh, the the city plan chapters and all the pieces are there ready to go. Um, we can build that out. We can start advertising. We'll have a couple of weeks to really start to, to try to get it out to the press and get some input and start to start to get everybody thinking about it and looking at it. And we'll see how the first chapters go. And maybe people really don't like it. Maybe people really do like it. Um, we're not going to know until it starts to get out there and people start to, to, to view it and think about it. Um, so you're going to, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yep. Oh, I was just going to say, but the, the first, one of the things that Maria and I talked about was we thought maybe we would make that meeting a little bit longer. The space is a little bit tight. And so we thought maybe it would be easier to have conversations if we had two sessions, maybe we could either start at five, I'd say we could start at 530 and just go 530 to 645 and try to go and get through everything in about an hour and 15 minutes or so. Uh, we also could start early, but the idea was if we had an early one and then a seven o'clock one. So whether it's a five o'clock and a seven o'clock or a five thirty and a seven o'clock, we could get people in, have the conversations, have a presentation, have everybody look at them. So the idea is everybody gets in. Uh, I do a presentation of 
what the whole process is, what the plan is, why we're doing it this way, um, and then break into th three different groups where we would have basically two stations. Uh, one is the computer to show the web of uh, the website because that's one piece. So we'll have the historic website and then some poster boards with the historic chapter, uh, the implementation strategies. So people can talk and we would all be split up among the different groups. And um, most of it's just to kind of hear what people have to say. Um, you don't have to be experts on, on what's on the board or in the text. A lot of it is, um, you know, that you've seen it, and especially if you're new to the commission, it might be something you weren't even a part of approving. So it's something it's just like, we're all here, we'll all look at it and tell me what you like, what you don't like. Uh, does it, you know, is it informative to you? Do you, you know, whether it's the website or do you like if it's the implementation strategies all up on the board? Does it make sense how we organized it? Do you like what we talk about? Do you like what our aspirations are, or what our goals are? Um, hopefully I've given a good preamble to it and people can understand, okay, what's an aspiration, what's a goal, what's a strategy. Um, because that's, that's the point of the whole thing. We spent a lot of time making these things because we were trying to make actionable plans, not just a bunch of plans talking about, um, you know, uh, encouraging and supporting things, which don't actually have any actionable items. So uh, our thought was, you know, we'll do it that way. And if we can set it up twice, then maybe we, we split the number of people that show up. We never know. Sometimes we can organize these things and we just get absolutely buried. We get 60, 70, 80 people that show up. And sometimes we do these things and we get a handful of people. So, but our thought was if we split it into two, maybe some people will show up at five and I don't know what everybody's work schedule looks like. So I don't know if five works, five o'clock and seven o'clock. Um, and then at least we've got, we've broken to some early people and some later people. And, um, but that's up to you. If you want to start a little bit earlier, we can certainly have that conversation. But if you want to start at 530, it also means staying later um, because we wouldn't be, obviously, if we started one at seven o'clock, we probably won't be out till 830. So it would be a longer night, but um, that was just an idea that Maria and and I talked about when we were in her space. So potentially doing one from like, would you need a break in between like five to six 30 and then seven to eight 30? Was that what you were thinking or? Yeah, we could do that. That gives enough time for people to, to get out and, you know, maybe some stragglers, but, you know, then, then from a, also from a parking standpoint, people are trying to find places to park. There are, there are a lot of places, but, you know, I don't know how busy, busy Sarducci's would be that night, but there is parking on Berry street and there is parking at the, um, dry cleaners and, and uh, down stone cutters way. So there is room to park. Okay, well, I'm sure some people will sneak across the Shaw's and run across the street and mm -hmm. cause problems. Yeah, right. What do the other planning commissioners think about? Could you start at five? Would you want two sessions? Well, I just don't know, Mike, in your experience with other sessions like this, I just don't know if that's, <clears throat> excuse me, like the early, I understand what you guys are saying with like an early and a late session to capture people, but I just don't know how realistic it is to have people come even earlier than five 30. I, I don't know. Um, if you, is it, we're basically having, basically this is a right. Just to remind me, this is basically a planning commission meeting, but we're making it into an information session, right? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. I mean, ideally I think getting, I know I see where you're getting it. It would probably be better to be at five, 30 because you're more likely to get people at 5 30 than you would at a five o'clock start wow just i'm just thinking like realistic like if people are getting done with their day even if they're done even if they work for the state <laughs> if they end right right if they end right at 4 30 like even that life is full um 
Yeah, I'm just wondering if like you guys, yeah, if it's like 5.30 to 7.30, like our regular meeting, then there may be, you know, you're, you're thinking what people would come later and may not have the benefit of your presentation, right? Is that, like if you were to do uh, it right Well, now, we would just, the idea was just, we'd re repeat it all over again. If it was If it was fast, I don't know how long it's going to take people to go through these. We usually give people about an hour and a half. But, um, you know, I, I just don't know how long it's going to take everybody to digest everything and come back to wrap everything up. Um, Mike, what are we seeing in, in other public meetings? I know, you know, sort of the community outreach model post-flood, there were a ton of people that were showing up in person. You know, it seems like in the city council meetings, you got a lot more people on remote than coming in person. You know, a handful of people in person. Um, wh what are you seeing in that regards? Are, are we planning on doing this hybrid or what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, the first one, I wasn't going to do hybrid. And I, I mean, we can certainly break this into a couple of different nights too, if that, if people think, you know, and if people have the, the flexibility, uh, I don't have a lot of other night meetings other than Wednesdays. Just don't put anything on Wednesdays. Um, so, I mean, if someone was like, yeah, I don't mind meeting a second time and we could have the Monday meeting at 530 and say a Thursday meeting could be by Zoom at 7. Um, it's just a little bit harder to do some of the interactions with the various maps because I, I don't know. I don't know how I would do all of the input other than just to go through and say, everything's here. What do you guys want to see? What do you guys want to talk about? Let me put this up first and take comments on this and basically do each one of the six pieces individually and take comments on it. Um, which wouldn't be bad if there was just, you know, eight or 10 people, we can have a good conversation about what they think about each piece. And as long as we're good at timekeeping, we can work our way through the, all the different sections. Um, but the, the advantage of having everybody together is we have the main presentation, everybody hears it and then everybody breaks into groups. And so then you can just kind of go from station to station and you've got an hour to kind of walk your way through and see all six pieces. And then we all come back together again so people can know, here's how we're going to take input. We've heard what you've said. We've had people taking notes. Um, and if you've got other comments, you know, here's the email link and here's this and here's that and we'll have other opportunities so i um, i really like the idea of breakouts because i think there are going to people be people who really want to comment on the art section and there's going to be other people that want to comment on you know housing and you know people have their issues that they really care about and i think that's a really good way of doing it i don't know if we can replicate that necessarily i mean you can always do breakout rooms i guess but I mean, I, I guess I'm just trying to get the feel. Are we okay just having an in-person meeting and saying, hey, this is going to be in-person. If you want to comment, we're going to have these breakouts. I'm, I'm certainly okay with doing, if we people are, I imagine you got to have a quorum there. You got to have at least four of us there to do the public meeting, right? So, but I'm on board if we needed to be in there a second night, I, I could support that. To do a second night rather than a big long night and try to cram it all together. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what other people think, but I, you know, we only do this once every decade or something, right? So, I, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys do, like, in the, I've seen other options, like the city will do hearings, like, X at X time. Some of them are hybrid, but I mean, you know, you'll have met staggered times, like you were saying, Mike, like, this one is at a regular meeting time. Of, I mean, maybe it's 5.30 to 7.30, the regular me meeting time, and that would be three you were talking about three these three sections, right? So that would get you, and maybe it's 5.30 to 6, maybe you'd start off with your presentation and then at 6.30, you'd do the presentation again for the late, late arrivals or something like that. And then there's another hour. of So it's almost like having, but you're not advertising two sessions. I, I feel like people might get a little confused about if they're on the same night. Um, can I, can I just ask, um, what, as far as what's going on, I understand we're going to be doing something over at the spy area, but what are we, are we talking about as far as uh, presentation, the time slots of the presentation for you, Mike, and then, uh, you know, public uh, question and answering, 
And is it within the same uh, time frame as our normal meeting? Or is this a special something? So this one is <clears throat> going to be at our, our regular meeting. So it would start at 530. Uh, I would expect we'd have a, a quick introduction. We'd probably go through, um, you know, because it's a meeting, we'd have go through those initial steps of that are at the start well, of every meeting. I, I, and I, then... I, just, I, I want to keep it moving for a sec. I just I got one specific question, though. As far as um, it, the, the, the meeting is concerned, um, are we going to need to... Um, you know, like you said, we're going to have to answer questions. So are we, I wasn't here for some of the meetings, I mean, or some of the information. So I'm just trying to get expectation or is that some other, should we talk about this some other time? Uh, because to be in a meeting where I kind of, I'm just learning everything right now. Um, is it necessary or what, what do I need to do? Yeah. So I think the way it would work is, you know, we, we'd open the meeting. So maybe by we open at 5.30, so maybe by 5.40, I'll start a presentation. I'll maybe take 15 minutes to give the presentation of the big picture of what's the plan, wh why are we doing it this way, and blah, 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 and explain the details. And then, so the idea is we get give a big overview, and then the way the next pieces would work is we've got three, three different areas, um, and everyone would be able to then, you know, the public would then be able to go to these different areas and they could go to see the housing, which would have a computer on housing and the but implementation Mike, can strategy. You, can I stop you right there just for, because yep. uh, what you're talking about right now is like the uh, format of it. So who are we deciding like the breakout sessions? Because I every time we talk about breakout sessions, you know, I'm, I'm reminded of the dots on the uh, white piece of paper for what we want for the flood. It sounds familiar. So at this juncture, who determines the breakout or not breakout and in, in that aspect of how this night goes? All right. So we already decided a few weeks ago that the, the three topics we would talk about are going to be historic housing and arts and culture. So those are the three, three chapter topics we're going to have. And I don't really expect that, you know, I, I, I need help from commissioners to help to, to be at all the different stations. And it's less about answering questions as much as it is about being able to take notes and listen to people and hear what they have to say. What, you know, and really it's, you know, what do you like about this? What don't you like about this? Are there things that are confusing you? And even if it's like, I can't, you know, even if somebody asks a question, why is this written this way? It's like, I don't know. That's a good question. Either I can get Mike to come over and answer it, or let me write that down. And um, that's a good point. If it's confusing to you, it's confusing to other people, and we should make sure that that's clear. It's that way we've got, and if you take some notes of what were the things you heard, um, good, bad, confusing, um, we can then come together as a planning commission at a different meeting. We can all start comparing notes. Well, what did you hear about this? Did you think people like this? Did you think... Um, you know, we're, how, how, how are we doing? Oh, everybody loved arts and culture. Nobody liked housing. It's like, okay, well, that's something. Um, uh, th then we can start comparing notes and seeing where we're at. But I don't think, and I don't expect everyone to be able to answer all the questions on where stuff came from, because these have been developed for the past six years. And I don't think anybody has been here for the whole six year time that can be able to say they've they know all all ten chapters. We're only doing three right now, but um, I that that's my expectation is we really just want to listen and hear what people have to say and and see their reactions. And so this is the uh, and so this is the public the first public view of SP's uh, uh, you know work on the website because that was one of, that was the the first meeting that I attended when I when I was on the meeting. Uh, first on the planning commission. So it, it, we were at the time we were talking about uh, pictures for Langdon street. So that's, it's now uh, progressed to the point where we're now releasing it to the public for their opinion. Um, uh, how much, uh, how much time will they, will they have that day to see it or will they have a, a you know, a period of time to kind of look over it to 
pose their own questions before they get to us? Yeah, good questions. So that was a little bit about what I was talking about at the start of this meeting when we were talking about um, what was I hoping to get out. I was hoping that I will be able to work with SE Group and Evelyn this week, and hopefully by Friday, we've got things either ready to go or we have a schedule to get them ready to go. And hopefully we can get it online, like at least the SE group piece, get that online. And I can let you guys know, here's the link. If you guys want to see it, we'll go public on Monday. And then people have two weeks to see it before getting to the meeting. So they've got, they, they might have already looked at everything and they might be coming to that meeting with a whole handful of questions and things they like or don't like. And that's perfectly fine. And some people may show up having never seen anything. Um, but the hope is, you know, people have had the opportunity and maybe some people will see it and provide comments because SE group is supposed to be setting up the website in such a way that people can directly comment from the website. So you, you scroll through it and there's a button that you can click on. It's like provide, give us our, your comments or, or questions that you have on this and people can write them right in and it would come to me. And I can share them with you or I can answer them directly if it's a specific question that I can answer. So that way we can start having input there. And if people want to collect ideas and bring them to me, bring them to all of us at the, at the hearing they can. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I think that that's what we want to do is to get it out early. Uh, and that's, that's the big push. Uh, so that way, if there's plenty of time ahead of time for everybody to see it, it's not a warned public hearing. We're not trying to get a warning in the newspaper 15 days in advance, but we do want to have give people enough time to really think about it and take a look at it and get some good comments to us. And then, as far as um, it, once we do 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 that, what what's the met what what are the metrics for you know the public's input and then actual online live getting it, getting it to the public. Um, for usage, getting the plan done. You mean or website? I'm 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 trying to understand like what what's the. I feel like okay. I've been on I've been on this for we we've talked about this for some time. I'm just trying to understand what's the deadline for the website to actually be on for the public, whether they like it or not. Ah, so. Uh, the, the idea we kicked around, it must've been the meeting you, you missed. You missed one of the meetings. We had some conversation about this, but, I was um, mayor. yep. Yeah. And so the, the, uh, what we thought, what we came up with for an idea and we'll see how well this works is we broke it into, uh, groups of three. So initially we had talked about in the past, we're all, oh, we'll do four or five and then we'll do four or five. We'll break it into halves And the commission talked and we said, well, let's break it into groups of three. So they're smaller bites. So we'll have in May, we'll talk about these three chapters. There are a total of 11 chapters. So we'll mm -hmm. talk about these three. And then in June or July, we'll talk about the next three. And then in August, we'll talk about the next three. And in September, we'll talk about the next two. So hopefully by October, all of these have been looked at at least once. All, all 11 chapters have all been looked at. And then we can sit down as a commission to go and say, we've seen everything. Um, we've made some edits along the way. How do we feel? Do we think we're in a good place? If we're in a good place, we think we're going to make these edits by whatever, um, October, November, December. Maybe it's not till January. Maybe we have to make a bunch of edits. And in January, we then warn the public hearing. And the whole document goes out kind of the same as the zoning. We do this is informational piece. Then we go to the public hearing where it's the formal public hearing. We warn it in the newspapers. It goes to the state. It goes to neighboring communities. And then we have actual hearings um, that the public can comment on. And this is where it's like, this is it. This is what it's going to be unless you guys tell us to change something. Um, I know some of you like it and some of you don't. And then it would go to city council. So maybe next May, this time of the year. Um, maybe city council is adopting it this time next year. So let me, I, let me ask you this. The, this is the website that has already been paid for. Correct. This is the $74,000 one we talked. Okay. Um, 
what's taking so long? I just I, like I hear the chapters, but who set up the format as to how we review this in this way so that it takes until however long for it to done? Who who where is that coming from? So we could do this. I mean, we could officially just warn the public hearings right now and start going to adoption. But um, the the big picture process came from came from me in my office. So we had when I got here in 2014, the city plan that had been adopted in 2010 was not particularly popular. Right. And a lot of counselors wanted to get rid of it, but we were neck deep in the zoning. And so we had to get through that huge zoning update that finally went through in 2018. And so we re we just readopted the old plan, even though people really weren't excited about it. They held their noses and readopted the plan. And a lot of the issues with that plan, you know, there's a lot of good things about it, but, you know, professionally, as, as I put things together, I didn't think it was a very strategic plan. It really wasn't written to facilitate a process for actually implementing things. And it wasn't organized in a, in a great way. I, so I didn't like the organization. I didn't like it was very strategic. So I wanted to go and redo it. And the most important thing for me was I wanted to make sure it was more strategic. So we went through a process where every one of those chapters would go to their boards and I would work with those boards and like historic preservation. Uh, we did the historic resources with the historic preservation commission. I probably spent six meetings which for them is about six months doing historic resources implementation strategy. And we did housing and we did all those. So that took years to go through all those different committees. So we could have everybody review it and come up with goal strategies, aspirations. At the same time, I'm bringing back to you guys, a different set of you guys um, to review those. And so we built all the implementation strategies and then we started to build the chapters. And I think the contract with them was, 74,000. I think it was 30,000 was the initial contract. We just got another one for 10. So I think we're, they're probably in it for about $40,000. So the second piece was, do we just do another paper um, plan? Like we've done for 60 years now. We, we got the paper documents. The issue is nobody ever looks at them. And yeah. so I did a lot of you know, research with the American Planning Association and went through, uh, looked at what plans are winning awards. What are the best? What is the best of the best? And what people are doing around the country is going to web-based plans. Uh, more people access them. More people look at them. Uh, it gets them, like, more I'm, eyes. I, I, yep. just, I don't. I don't want to hijack it because I know what you're talking about. It's in my wheelhouse, and I certainly. I just want to understand who made the decision of the format and the process. And you said that was you, so that's cool. We can co go ahead and continue going on what, you know, what we were doing. I don't want to hijack the rest of it for me to get up to, up to speed on certain things, but thank you. No, nope, it's all right. And like I said, it, so it's been a slow process. The big picture is we started in 2018. We had to deal with COVID. We've had to deal with a lot of crap. And so, yes, what did I, did I plan to have this done in 2022? Absolutely. Uh, did it happen? It absolutely did not. <laughs> so here we are. Um, and uh, the plan is valid until the end. So plans have expiration dates. Our plan will expire in December of 25. So there's a deadline out there, but we're okay for now. Um, and the reason, that's one of the reasons I'm not in a rush to try to get this adopted fast. Um, we're not under pressure. Let's make sure the public has an opportunity to comment. If we get through this first one, everyone's like, we love it. We put the next year out. We love it. The next one, we love it. And we just book our way right through it. I would be as happy as anyone, um, that we can get this uh, maybe adopted this year. Uh, that's not impossible to get it adopted this year, but I don't want anyone to feel like anyone in the public to feel like I'm rushing them. Um, because it's an important document and everybody should take time to get to review it and think about it. Um, so that's my, that, that, that's my approach. Understood. Thank you. Um, Mike. So it sounds a little bit like we reached a point where we're going to have look at one 
just doing it once for the for the Monday the thirteenth, and maybe do the five thirty, and maybe we'll find a different night um, to do one. Maybe we move our planning commission meeting to seven o'clock. So rather than having a five thirty, we'll have a seven o'clock to eight thirty. Um, and I don't know if we want to warn that for a special night or if we want to just have, Oh, what do we have? Let's see. It was the 13th. That's right. Memorial day is our second meeting. So it would have to be the 28th or as we said, we can, we could pick a different night and then cancel the 28th meeting. You know, we could just have another meeting on, the 13th and Thursday, the 16th at seven o'clock. So we'd have a five 30 on Monday or a seven o'clock on Thursday. And we'd have two meetings and then not meet at after Memorial day, um, get two meetings in for the month. They're both in the same week and we can advertise that to try to get as many people as we can, but they're different times. So if somebody can't make an early one, they can do the Thursday late one. And I'm just throwing out ideas. Yeah, that sounds good to me too. Carlson, Gabe, Brian, does that sound okay? Yeah. Would you? Would... Yeah. Uh, which, where was yeah. the? What was the date? Thursday, the sixteenth at seven o'clock. So we we do them back, not back to back. We do them the same week. We do the the five thirty to seven thirty as our normal meeting on the thirteenth, and then the Thursday the sixteenth would be the seven to whatever 8 30. it works for me I'm, so i yeah. i have a conflict on thursday nights but i think you do we have enough without me i think you probably would yeah well, we should have the new person on as well by then so we'll okay. initiate them by getting them in a couple of meetings um all right so that sounds good and i'll i'll talk with Maria afterwards, we'll see if we need a, a different location or how that works for the, for the second meeting. We'll, like I said, we'll figure out what, what works. For yeah, those. And as I said, I'll work with Evelyn on, on advertising those. Great. Yeah. Just to answer Maria's question in the chat, we don't, Mike said there is someone who's applied, but we don't know the name of the person. Um, but they could be approved by the city council on May 8th. So, um, but if you know somebody else who's interested, they can still, you know, still apply. And like Mike said, I think it is nice for the city council to have, you know, several people to choose from if they can. Um, so is there, so it sounds like all the advertising the website, the storyboards, that will all be taken care of by your office, right, Mike? And yeah. so maybe the only thing, I mean, maybe we should just, should we just tonight just decide which groups we'll take notes for or attend? Is that helpful? It's just so we're not, oh, Gabe, you're muted. You're trying to talk. Oh, he must be talking to somebody else in the room. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. That just could be helpful to decide ahead of time. And then we're not figuring it out the night of, um, yeah, I would probably be happy to just be, attend the housing group. And I'm sure Maria is going to do the arts. Okay, great. Well, I'll, I'm not an expert, but I'll I'll review and be <clears throat> ready to take notes for people on historic resources. That's helpful. Great. Yeah. And I guess, okay. Mike, just from a review standpoint, we would be are we would be re, we be reviewing these once they're up. You're saying once they're up, and we can look at them. I mean, obviously, we have the content of them. They're in the drive, right? We can look through them again. But what's the is that the best, is that our homework is to review the, all of the sections and be ready to 
well, not be experts at it, but just be ready to take notes and talk with people. Yeah, I think it's most, like I said, mostly just to take notes and talk to people. It's helpful if you can get, can take a peek at them. Um, I will send you when they're, when they're ready and when they're up. As I said, I'll, okay. I'll send you, don't, you don't have to worry about it until I email you to say the information's up. Uh, if you want to take a look through all of them or through the one that you're going to be looking at, um, okay, then cool. we can make that work. So I'll bet, I'll make a pick for Gabe. Gabe, I bet, would be a good one for housing. Yes, yeah, so I can do housing on the Monday night, not the Thursday. Ah, uh, yep. And then everyone, as we said, everyone, I don't know, Carlton, do you have a choice for which one you'd want to? Where, where are my choices? In uh, housing, arts, and historic resources. Housing, arts, housing. And I'm, I'm happy to do, maybe I should do, um, if Gabe and Carlton want to do housing, I, I'll just sit in on whichever one Aaron doesn't want, assuming that Aaron is going to come. I, I can be yeah. flexible. It doesn't really matter. Well, I just... And I could do, I could do historic too. I mean, I think either of those, whatever we need. Now we can yeah. float. We had a one dedicated person for each and the other people can float around it, it. Who knows which one's going to be more popular, right? There could be more. Right. People yeah. to listen to at an, at one of the stations. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just I just was trying to like plan ahead so we weren't like who's going to do what at the meeting. But um, I think yeah, that sounds especially if like Maria covers arts and Brian covers historic preservation. We know we have at least one person for those because housing is probably going to be the most popular. I'm guessing. <laughs> um. Okay, and then I just one last question, or I just have one last question on the meeting. Um, can we bring food? I mean, I assume we the city won't buy food, but I'm happy to bring some food too. Yeah, if we've got food, um, we can sometimes reimburse for some things. Uh, I've always found it tough to do some of these occasionally because you just don't know who's going to show up. So either you show up with too much right. or you show up with too little. It's kind of wish you knew ahead how many people were going to make it so you can could do it. Um, I've known some, some people I'm, I'm a terrible event planner. So any help people want to give, uh, on that front, go for it. Um, and, and I've known, so I've been worked in some communities that they would just organize high socials or dinners and all these things. And they get all these people to come out and I'm like, well, that's fantastic. I was like, if I organized it, I'd end up with a whole bunch of stuff and I'd be taking a bunch of food home. But can we do a raffle? <laughs> <laughs> Show for public interest. Please come. Here's a raffle. Free parking ticket. Get out of free, get out of jail free for parking. <laughs> that actually might work, but yeah, we'll 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 see how successful we are at the start. Maybe just knowing that the city plan has finally made it, we'll get a few people to show up. Okay. Um so yeah, it sounds good. Like I said, I'll send out some emails. If people feel like we need to have a quick meeting or or something quick just to work over the details. As I said, I'm going to be on vacation, so that's tough for the week before. Uh, that's just where my vacation worked out. Um, so I won't be I won't be around for the week of the. 6th to 10th so if we need to do something before then it'd have to be that, that last week of april first week of may okay well i think you and the se group are doing the hard work and we just we just should you know maybe review the chapters and just be ready to listen and and i'll bring food <laughs> some food and if people are Perfect. Welcome to bring more <laughs> um Okay, so do we have anything else, any other comments on the public input meetings? No, that sounds good. Okay, great. Um, oh, so the next thing is finding someone to be our representative to the 
Regional Planning Commission. I was supposedly doing that. <laughs> and I I have to admit I had very poor attendance record at the meeting, but um it is just a once a month meeting. Um and Mike, I don't know, you probably know better than I can describe better than I can. Uh, but the topics are pretty interesting. Yeah, so they will try to pressure you into getting other other meetings, although it's one one official meeting a month. They will try to get you onto subcommittees, um, which they have many of, so they try to get you at least into one of them. Um and it, it is interesting if that's what you're you know, if you find whatever the the topics are. Um interesting i am the alternate i've been the alternate for 10 years now and that's perfectly fine and i actually have a little bit more time now so if we got into a position where i kind of had to step in to be more the full-time person rather than the alternate i can do that too but if there's somebody who has an interest um i think gabe you were on the the regional planning commission for a while weren't you just, just like maybe three Short. or four months. And then, yeah. yeah, yeah, not very long. It was enough for me to say I, I can't do that in, in the future. They're pretty good at sucking in other things. I, <laughs> I, I'm sure you can say no, but they, they're pretty good at it. Yeah, they're they're pre they're pretty good salesmen at getting you looped into a few things. So, but yeah, I don't yeah, know I if mean, there's I, somebody I, I who does it's... have an interest. I would I'd welcome to let them in if they're if nobody's really there. I can keep attending these meetings. I'm on the regional plan, the regional plan meetings and the regional commission. So um, I already kind of have a. I'm already going to one of the meetings anyway, so it's not the end of the world if I have to go to a second one. And the fact that they're remote makes a big difference for me. It used to be. You know, obviously I live in Hardwick, so I'd have to go to this 6.30 to 8.30 to 9 o'clock meeting in October and November and December and January, and I'm driving home in the snow with an extra meeting at 10 o'clock at night, and I'm like, this is crazy. But the fact that I can just drive home and watch it and participate from home makes it a lot less of an issue for me to be able to play that role. Okay, yeah, I think what was hard for me was just that it's at the is it the second Tuesday of the month? So yep. it would always come right after a planning commission meeting. And I've just found it hard to schedule with my family to like do two meetings, two nights in a row. Um, but as you said, it's uh, it's remote and it is, it's a little bit later, 6.30 to 8.30, I think. Yeah. So does anyone have any interest or should we take Mike up on his generous offer to <laughs> handle this responsibility for us? Brian, Carlton, Maria, any interest or? Uh, it's the same deal with me. I'm, I, I'm not interested in anything really volunteer at this point, at this juncture. Yeah, anything else? That. Anything else? Anything else? That's that's what I meant. Yeah. I I would love to take Mike up on his offer, and with the idea that if it gets to be too much, that you bring it back to the commission and we we find yes. someone amongst ourselves to do it. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. I think that's a really good point. Be let us know, Mike, if it's too much, and we could also have a new member who might be interested in it, I suppose, too. So I mean is is there a uh is there a way to hold on a second, mute am I on is there a way to share the load? I mean is that would that help as far as like alternate people to fill in for you, Mike, or when you need it? To keep it moving? Yeah, I mean there there are two seats. There's the primary seat and there's the alternate seat. And I've been the alternate for 10 years. So basically, if oh, Gabe or Ariane or Kirby couldn't make it, I filled in, um, and then they loop, loop, looped me in. So somebody also could go and say they'd be willing to be the alternate, and I could be the primary. And if I can't make it, then I could ask the alternate to fill in for me. Yeah, I'm I'm too seat uh, I'm too seat by the pants right now, but I, I I'll aspire to that. 
<laughs> well, maybe we'll get you the next time around. Okay. So, right. all right. Well, we'll see what what happens with the new person when they come on. Maybe they haven't they have an interest or or a background in it. They might have, uh, like I said, whether it's a primary or or an alternate. That's fine. Right. Um, so the next item on the agenda is status on flood recovery efforts, which I think you touched upon a little bit, Mike, but if you can give us any more updates, that'd be great. Yeah, so we had some uh, folks ask about how things are going with the flood. So there are a couple of big kind of big buckets that we're looking at. The first one is the public buildings um you know we were in city hall i was in city hall i was in the basement i had four feet of water in my office uh the fire station was was severely flooded and there was a little bit of flooding here in the police station um just a little bit in the basement it came in through the elevator sump pump hole so uh there was maybe maybe a hundred thousand dollars worth of damage to this building uh, and many millions of dollars to city hall and to the fire station. So we have a process we're working through. They're evaluating the buildings. They're coming up with alternatives on Wednesday. The council got the first look at the alternatives. One of which is, do we want to build a new fire station? So that's the big, that's the big question. Um, and we're doing the homework to figure out how much is FEMA going to pay if, if, you know, are they paying a hundred percent? Are they paying 90%? You know, and that's obviously a huge piece of information that will help make that decision because if they're only paying 20% of it of an $8 million fire station, then we're probably not building a new fire station. If FEMA's paying 90 or a hundred percent of a new fire station, we'll probably build a new fire station. So, um, it's the, the council's decision was to lean heavily on making everything as flood resilient as possible. So let's, let's have the least risk to damage. Um, so we still have a staff, uh, a staff recommendation that'll be coming and there's still work with the, with what the consultant is recommending. So staff hasn't sat down to make a recommendation yet. Um, you know, we've got a pretty good idea of what we would think is a good idea. But um, we'll see where all the information comes in at. So that's the big piece when it comes to the public buildings. Um, unlike a lot of uh, other communities, um, a lot of times you get floods and the communities talk about uh, damage. I, I live in Hardwick. Roads were washed out. Culverts were washed out. Bridges were washed out. Um, it was a mess. So a lot of them, they've got public, their public bucket is a lot of infrastructure we didn't no bridges no culverts no roads got washed out our sewer plant didn't get washed out our water plant didn't get washed out just these three buildings sitting down here so we we feel fortunate um that that's the only damage we had so we're we, we kind of feel fortunate but you know it's still these were still key buildings and they were significantly damaged so um, we'll keep working on those. We'll make a decision coming up this spring and summer as to which path we're going to take. We've got to go to council. Council will eventually have to say, yes, this is the one we want to go for. And then we can start working on, you know, whatever that path is. So if the path is build a new fire station, then I'll be working on a, probably on a subcommittee that'll be like, where does it going to go? Uh, how do we acquire that property? Do we have a willing seller of that property that we can just negotiate with, or do we have to use eminent domain and take it? Um, it all, and we don't know any of these questions. We don't know any of these answers because we just, we're just not there yet. But one of the key things is it's pretty hard to make that fire station flood proof. And, and we need to relocate everybody who is in the basement. We can't have anybody in the basement anymore. So even if we kept the fire station, we have to build an addition on the back of city hall to build offices for the people who lost their offices. So um, th that's, those are the alternatives city council will be looking through, but that's the first bucket. Um, if anyone has questions on that, then I'll go to the second bucket. 
So, well, what, Mike, what was the plan? Just I didn't see that that part of that meeting. What what was the what's the plan for City Hall? It would just be a rent, just be redoing those your office in that that level. Would they be renting like or no? No, nope. it'd be abandoned. So the, the the three there were three alternatives. Uh, well, three or four. There was like a one, a one A, one B, and a two, and a two A, and two B. And so there's a whole a bunch of these alternatives. But the first one was there's the basic one, which is put everything back because we need the base cost because that's how FEMA works. The next one is put everything back, but flood proof the building, leave, leave everybody in the basement. That was an option. The next option was nobody's going to be in the basement, but we're going to flood proof it and we're going to leave it for storage or for some other uses that are not offices. When you get to option two, we're abandoning the basement. We're filling it in, pouring concrete. It's flood proofed. Nobody can put anything down there ever again because it's all full of dirt and concrete. Um, so in a couple of these things, we've displaced 16 employees, five, six, seven, eight, uh, 13 employees have been displaced when you, if we're not going into the basement, so we get moved out, where do they go? So if you just kind of leave that out there, we have this group of 13 people, five of which will go back down to public works. The other eight are left left homeless. Um, the next, so we'll, we'll leave them there while we talk about the fire station because part of the answer is part of the solution could be the fire station. The fire station flooded a lot. Um, it's got a lot of issues. It's got a lot of deferred maintenance. We've got to go and fix it back up. Um, but Ideally, FEMA does not like to have stuff in, in there. So it would cost a lot of money to flood proof. There'd be these mechanical things in the floors that when a flood comes, they would fold up like this to push against the, the doors, the garage doors, because you have to keep the water out. So there'd be these big hydraulic things. It'd be probably pretty spectacular, pretty cool, but not an ideal way to go and keep your, your place from flooding. Everything would have to get flood proofed and keep the water out. Um, so that's why the the consultant said option. A. So they they have two options. Option A: we flood proof the building. We use these giant doors and we do all this stuff to flood proof the building. The second one is forget it. We'll just build a new fire station and we'll elevate it and we'll put it in a place where it doesn't flood. So that was option two. Though, although they didn't say where, they said maybe the back of Blanchard parking lot, which is the parking lot behind Rite Aid or Walgreens. Not a big popular spot because it's still trapped in the flood. It's not, doesn't have any dry land access to anywhere. So, um, but it's still a possible site. Other than that, it was just ideas. They were like, let's talk about ideas. So if we built a new fire station, then we could renovate the fire station. And then we don't need big hydraulics in the front because we can just brick up the front leave the doors so it looks like doors, but actually there's all brick behind it and it's all flood proof. And then we could use the first floor of the fire station as a, a new council chambers, then renovate the second floor as offices. So we would be able to City accommodate Hall everybody. City Hall Annex. Yep. So that would be the, that's the idea. We'd, well, that would, and there we go. We've got our offices. We've got a new thing there. We've got plenty of space. And so that was, one of the alternatives. Now, if they keep the fire station, then we still have eight people without a building. And there's a cost of a couple million dollars to put an addition on the back of city hall that would allow uh, the new offices to get built in back. Um, so again, they threw a bunch of ideas out and what council basically said was do whatever is going to be making the most resilience. So let's get our fire station in a place where it is flood proofed. Um, so we don't have to, you know, remember we get ice jams. That's always our thing. If we get an ice jam, there's not a warning. We don't know the water's coming until it starts to come. And then, you know, you might have to get fire trucks out. And then if nobody's left behind, if everybody takes a vehicle and drives out to get it to, to a safe, dry location and nobody's back at the fire station, then nobody's there to close the doors. Um, and the flood waters flood the flooded again anyways. So that's part of the issue is trying to make sure we get all of these things. Um, think through all the ideas. Um, 
and we'll see. Uh, there's, you know, filling in the basement of City Hall certainly would mean it never gets used again. It also means we lost a third of the space of City Hall. And we had a lot of kind of not very whatever exciting things in the basement that were perfectly fine. There's some public bathrooms down there. There was a teen center down there. We had the staff uh, lunch room was down there where we had, you know, uh, the microwaves and the stoves and the refrigerators. So there's some things that we're kind of thinking as staff. We don't necessarily have to give up the basement. We could put a bunch of stuff in there where if it floods, we're losing some chairs, we're losing some refrigerators, but A, it's now flood proofed, so it shouldn't flood. And B, if it does flood, we're not losing all of our files. We're not losing all of our computers, all of our phone networks. Everything that's important has been lifted out. Um, like the elevator doesn't work because all the elevator equipment was in the basement. Well, if we restore it, the elevator equipment's all up higher. So there's a lot of things that if for some reason the flood proofing failed and water got in the basement, we would still not be in bad shape. We would be throwing away some ping pong tables from the teen center and some refrigerators and We'll see where council goes um, and what the staff recommendation is, but we're, we're not a hundred percent staff, at least not a hundred percent on for filling in the basement just because we think there's, there, there could be okay things down there. We just don't want staff down there. It's, it's not okay for staff to be down there. Um, right. right. Okay. No, thank you. Thanks for that update. I, I can watch the, I should watch the city council meeting, but thank you for that. So, and then I, I won't take a, long, a lot of time to, to go over the other ones, we can, or we can take as long as we want. But so the other two groups we've broken into are, um, so we've got the public buildings, we've got the residential buildings. So what are we doing about people who are flooded into the residential on the first floor? And we just kind of had a conversation about that. We've, we've got two tracks going. One is we're applying to FEMA to get money to elevate. FEMA is very hard to get money to elevate buildings. Um, but we're still applying because we don't know if we're going to get state funding. State funding is our big hope. If the state comes through, it made it through the House bill. It's currently in the Senate bill, so it will get funded. It is on a contingency list, and we're trying to get it off the contingency list. So um, that way the money would be available on July 1st for people to start elevating their buildings. And like we said, we got... 12, 13 buildings, uh, 12 of them are the small residential buildings. The one special building is North Branch Apartments, which is um, down street. Uh, they had flooding into the first floor uh, and they actually had a lot of damage because they had oil tanks that tipped over and the oil seeped up through the floor into the first floor. So they had a lot of environmental work to clean it up. Elevating that one building is $2 million. Elevating all the other buildings is two is two million dollars. So, we asked uh, the congressional delegation for two million dollars for North Branch. So, hopefully, we can get two million dollars to elevate that huge block. I mean, that's a really big building. Um, I don't know the exact twenty four units in it. It's a big building. Um, so we would get that building elevated and and make that that flood proof because we that shouldn't that shouldn't flood. Um. That's that's probably the worst of the situations is to have um, that community of folks that have to get displaced. Um, so that's our second piece. And then our third piece is trying to uh, address all of the commercial properties. So we have grants that we're putting out now that are, they're kind of three-step grants that you apply for and they do phase one, phase two, phase three. And so phase one is, we'll get money to do the evaluations of the buildings. And the idea is we would go through, look at all the, look at all the buildings and start to come up with strategies for each building and what we could do, because, you know, we're not going to elevate Obishans, you know, a, a three story brick building. That's, that's not getting elevated, but we could flood proof it. So that's, you know, putting floodgates, you know, they'd have to be manually put on, um, which is not ideal, but, if you know a flood might be coming because of weather, you can certainly go through and 
gets flood proof buildings, but we could also close up a lot of the, the openings where water comes in easily, uh, make it less likely to flood. Um, all those types of strategies. And that's what the evaluation does. It looks at what it would cost, what we would need to do. And then ultimately it's up to the property owner. And we would try to then apply for HMGP hazard mitigation grant program dollars to help offset some of those costs. So hopefully we can convince a handful of them or more folks to, to participate in flood proofing their buildings. So that's, kind of the three-step piece. We've got the, the public, we've got the residential, and we've got the commercial. Um, and that's what we've been tackling. The commercial, if it happened, would be 2026 because you, we'd spend this year doing that phase one uh, and then 2025 doing phase two where we talk to the property owners about what they want. And then maybe, maybe 2026, we've got money to start actually retrofitting some of the doorways and getting some of these pieces done. That's a much longer process, but hopefully, as we said, the public piece is first and the residential piece is first and the commercial will be afterwards. Did you see Maria's question in the chat? Um, why some of the commercial store flints haven't been rebuilt yet. Yeah. So I, I am not fully plugged in on Montpelier Alive and how things have been going. Uh, I know a couple of businesses changed places because they wanted to get less flood risk. I know some of them just didn't have the resources to come back. Um, and so I, I don't know this, the full status of all of them. I, I thought I heard a number of like 80% had come back, but losing 20% of your downtown is still a big hit. Um, and as I said, some of them were people trying to convert them to other uses like residential. And so now with the new rule, that's going to make things a little bit harder, but at the same time, we've got to also watch out for the, the tenants. So they're taken care of, but I really hope we can come up with some good strategies and get some good resources to help get some of these elevated and, or get, get some of them flood proofed. And maybe if they're flood proof, people will be more, comfortable about reinvesting into the buildings. But Josh is our economic development person and he's got his ear a little bit more to the ground on those, on those businesses. But I haven't met with Montpelier alive. I know the assistant city manager has been meeting with them. So we occasionally get questions on stuff, try to make sure that, whatever they're looking for. I know they're, they're trying to get some state and federal funds as well to get them directed down to the businesses to help them out. Okay, thanks for that report. Um, so I guess the last item of business is to look at the minutes from January 2nd and March 25th, and then when we've had a chance to look at them, someone could make a motion. Could we make a motion to approve both at once, Mike? If if somebody has looked at them and and looked at both and think they're both okay, then we can do that. Okay. The sun had been chasing me out of my desk.
Well, the, the, the minutes looked okay to me. I'd move to approve both minutes from January and uh, March. Second. Okay, hey, great. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Great. Thumbs up from Maria. Um, okay, great. So I think the last thing is just adjourning and let's see, I was going to try to do this a different way. If any, in, unless anyone has any other items that need, does anyone have any other items that they want to discuss? Um, okay, I can, can I close the meeting then? <laughs> Is that yeah, how you it's can, done? Yeah, okay. You can deem it to be closed. I deem the meeting to be closed. All Good right, job. and I'll look, look forward to seeing all of you on the 13th. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.